What's up guys, this is Anime Crossover, I'm back with the new episode of What If Naruto Was The King Of All Saiyans Part 4 And if you did enjoy the video, give this video a like and if you much I like my content, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more crossover fictions Now let's begin this new video Chapter 17 Goku and Naruto return to Earth to reunite with their family Naruto came at Capsule Corp to see Bulma hard at work on a new spaceship he kissed Trunks on the cheek before checking up on him. He noticed his son playing with Goten and Ranch in the yard, they had all recently turned two and were born much earlier than in canon. Naruto was astonished to learn that Raditz had married Launch and had a child so soon. Though, as always, Naruto thought that giving them three new full-blooded Saiyans was a wonderful thing. Bulma frequently questioned if Naruto had something to do with their relationship, after all, he was the one who sent Raditz to Kames to study Kamehameha when he knew Launch would be there. Naruto was never going to let Goku nickname him Oni-chan. Putting that notion aside, Naruto watched them play for a while. They were all two years old at the time, but due to their genetics, they all looked and moved like they were four. Naruto laughed as he moved up to his wife and kissed her again after seeing Bulma act as a mediator between the youngsters arguing over a toy. Good morning, children, Naruto murmured as he wrapped his arms around her waist. Bulma grinned. Bulma believed that it was an excellent moment to begin her training because she had to beat off Naruto because they were attempting to win his affections. It had nothing to do with the fact that the Saiyan females referred to her as a weakling and a low-class queen wannabe. She had excellent trainers and was extremely intelligent, her power level had also increased dramatically in a few days. Bulma always wanted to practice with Vegeta, but he always said, no matter how much you ask, I won't be able to hurt my Bulma. Bulma eventually gave up and accepted his assistance by repeatedly casting a re-heal spell on her while she practiced with the others. Bulma was a member of the strongest wives under the heavens group after all of her training. Bulma's power level was 135 million, Chi-Chi's power level was 140 million, Launch's power level was 100 million, finally, Jine possessed a power level of 150 million. Bulma grabbed Naruto's wrist and asked, so, did you have fun training with Goku? Not as much as I missed you. Naruto laughed, good answer, Bulma said as she turned around, perhaps we might spend a few days within the Earth's training grounds. Naruto grabbed Bulma and began to float higher, saying, well, what are we holding out for? Let's get started. He looked over to find Raditz cordially conversing with Tights, how long has he been here? Apparently, they hit it off well, they just decided to become friends, Bulma smiled. Oh god, can you imagine if they got married instead? Naruto began to sweat. Kakarot would have been my in-law. Bulma chuckled, it couldn't possibly be that bad. He's not my brother, he's my rival. What if they called me Oni-chan? Naruto shivered and fought the need to vomit. He'd do that just to get you, Bulma burst out laughing. It's not even funny, Naruto responded. He sighed and turned to Trunks and Goten, saying, Kids, we're going to Turtle Mountain, Trunks can spend a few nights over at Goten's place. Goten exclaimed, Yay, Trunks is welcome to spend the night at my house. I'd like to come as well, Ranch yelled, Trunks grumbled, You live there idiot. You can take that back, Trunks, Ranch yelled as she threw him to the ground. Trunks shook her off and dashed over to the window, he opened it with a sly smirk on his face and exclaimed, The last one there is a rotten egg. Trunks took off while pointing his tongue out at his two companions. No way, Trunks, you lied, Goten chased him down. I'll get you for this Trunks, Ranch smirked, before teleporting Bulma to Goku's house, Naruto chuckled heartily at the children's antics. The modifications that occurred surrounding Goku's dwelling were significant. First, Bulma assisted them in selecting a considerably larger house in which to dwell. Second, a few dozen miles distant from their land, they constructed a vast and sprawling came dojo. It was outfitted as a top-tier training facility with several fighting platforms, healing chambers incorporated within a medical wing, gravity training rooms, and top-of-the-line workout machines that even Saiyans adore. Massive dorms and facilities such as shops and restaurants were developed near the came dojo's properties for the live-in students and residents of Turtle Mountain. From a distance, it appeared to be a technologically advanced but little mountain town. Tien and Chaotzu had become dojo trainers, as had Grandpa Gohan, Krillin, and even Master Roshi, who came by now and then to help under the guise of checking out the young ladies in training. Yamcha, on the other hand, had vanished shortly after Vegeta's arrival on Earth, since then, no one has seen or heard of him. Tien had a power level of 188 million, 
Krillin had a power level of 190 million. Chaozu's power level was 50 million. Grandpa Gohan was worth roughly 100,000 power level. He didn't participate in the physical training, thus just his technique improved. He'd usually grumble about too much strain on these old bones. Grandpa Gohan was a far better teacher than Goku, who was. Well, he was just bad at it. Even with Grandpa Gohan's assistance, it took him a long time to learn to teach with the right words rather than sound effects and body gestures. The teaching Goku how to be a teacher plan, on the other hand, paid off. Helping him discover words for his students allowed him to gain a deeper understanding of his own abilities. He even improved his ignorant behavior as a result of his students teaching him about everyday life. Just a few moments later, Bulma and Naruto sensed Ranch, Trunks, and Goten arrive in an explosion of ki and wind. Jain and Bardock were the first to notice them and saluted, my lord. It's okay, Naruto said, waving his hands, you can skip the pleasantries while I'm still on earth. Oh, Kami. I'm sounding like those smug. Sai, remind me not to send the royal tutors to ambush me again. That's not why I taught them to detect ki. Bulma giggled as she noticed the changes in Naruto's tone of voice. Gardna worked in the medical field. In a year, he hasn't cursed. The sound of Trunks and Goten collapsing drowned out his voice, I win. Trunks yelled, you cheated Trunks by not lining up with me, Goten responded. Ranch had the same thought before sprinting over to Jain and yelling, Grandma. You two are so adorable, Jain said as she picked Ranch and Goten up and cuddled their cheeks, I adore both of you. Hello, kids, why don't I get a hug? Bardock directed his finger at himself. Goten and Ranch giggled as they jumped into Bardock's embrace. Where is Grand Uncle Turles? Launched inquired. Turles left the planet in search of Naruto's brother, he and the other Saiyans who may have survived the initial explosion because he was sent off planet years ago, Bardock replied. Turles, supposedly, discovered his former self and was attempting to atone for his sins. They all tried to keep his background hidden from him, but he eventually found out when the wives were discussing. Turles, feeling horrible about his cruel activities, resolved to try to find other Saiyans who might be out in space and persuade them that they've been on the wrong path. If he was successful, Turles would return them to planet Salada, where he chooses to live as a representative of the Sun family. While Goku and Chi-Chi were greeting everyone, Goku and Naruto detected a powerful surge of energy reach their solar system. Everyone gazed up and could feel the dreadful power creeping closer and closer to Earth. Naruto and the others blasted off in the direction of the arriving spaceships. All of the Z warriors appeared in a huge wasteland. The ship was approaching their positions as the shape of the PTO's mothership appeared in the sky. Dozens more PTO dropships sailed alongside it and landed not far from the mothership on the planet. The Z fighters all watched as the purplish pink and white frost demon descended in his basic form. This is a nice planet, he observed, looking around. Clean skies, fresh waters, and a bountiful ocean, it should command a premium price. Move out and find me those dragon balls," Cooler said, waving his hand. Naruto and the others were about to make a move when a voice interrupted them, saying, I don't think you'll be making a move anytime soon. Everyone turned to see a young man with blue hair wearing a capsule company jacket and holding a sword on his back. So you must be Frieza, he murmured, staring down the frost demon. Cooler made a strange face and laughed, no, I'm afraid you've got me mixed up with my brother. Odd, did I come to the wrong time? Future Trunks puzzledly said. Are you an earthling? With a frigid smile, Cooler inquired. You're about half right. Trunks began sensing the strength levels of all of Cooler's warriors, at which point he grimaced and instantly transformed into a Super Saiyan. He launched an all-out assault on the soldiers without notice. Only Cooler, with a power level of 162 million, could halt his attacks, but instead of acting, he was pleased at how Trunks handled himself in combat. Cooler was about to strike when Naruto and Goku appeared out of nowhere. They had both transformed into Super Saiyan 2 and charged at the Frost Demon. Before Trunks or the Frost Demon could respond, the two competing Saiyans hit Cooler in the face with all their might. Cooler, who had been severely subdued, suddenly raised his arms to repel their combined assaults. Trunks was able to utterly destroy the Cooler force because of the split second provided by Goku and Naruto. A gleaming light reflected off metal swept across the battlefield, slicing through the attackers all at once. When Trunks came to a halt and sheathed his sword, the soldiers on the land collapsed and exploded, dying in their places from numerous cut wounds. 
Countless air bursts from Goku and Naruto's joint assault destroyed entire spaceships full of PTO soldiers above the future warrior. While the combat heated up, their ships plummeted to the earth in a swirl of fire and destruction. Salza and his soldiers appeared to be the only ones who survived the attack. Salza had eaten his second fruit of might and achieved the power level of 165 million, making him significantly stronger than Trunks. Salza charged at Trunks, brandishing his own key sword. Trunks, while being slightly shorter, was only able to keep up because of his superior martial arts talents and fighting experience. Trunks was captured in Salza's trap after dozens of clashes between the two. Despite being wounded, his soldiers managed to pretend to be dead during Trunks' first assault. They stretched out and grabbed Trunks before Salza impaled him on his key sword. Blood spurted from the wound in Trunks' mouth, but Salza didn't stop spinning around and dragging the blade across his chest, ripping into his organs and bones. Trunks let out a death howl, but before he fell, he saw Gohan abruptly power up to SS2 and punch Salza in the gut. The power was so strong that it stretched out the villain's gut and launched him into the distance, falling into a mountainside. When the surviving men noticed that Salza wasn't getting up, they watched in despair as Piccolo, Krillin, Raditz, and Bardock finished out the remainder of Cooler's elites. Gohan knelt and gave Trunks a sensu before asking, Hey, are you a Salada Saiyan? Trunks sensed everyone's key and then said to his father and Goku, Either mom has a terrible memory, or I came to the wrong timeline. He could feel the power wash over them like a soothing storm. If they had this kind of power, then this can't be the past. Where am I? He wondered. Before he could continue, he felt Cooler's power spike, which surprised everyone. Cooler sealed his own power because he was in his base form, or rather his fourth form, similar to how Frieza did on Namek. When Cooler became bored, he moved his power until it revealed that his power level was stable at 200 billion. Goku and Naruto were well aware that their present strength level of 40 billion was insufficient to compete with Cooler. Their mastered SS2 forms increased their 200 million power level by 200 times instead of 150, yet it was still no match for Cooler. How did he get so strong? Grumbled Naruto. I'm not sure what you mean, I believed Cooler's maximum power was around 400 million. Goku, on the other hand, was overjoyed to be facing such a formidable frost demon. Even as Cooler launched a barrage of strikes, Goku maintained his cheerful demeanor. Cooler began to beat the living shit out of them as Naruto continued to heal them. But after Goku turned into his mastered Super Saiyan 3 form, everything changed, with Goku's base power increasing by 1000 times. Cooler was taken aback when Goku's power level increased to 200 billion, as Goku's punch railed into Cooler's face and sent him flying into the sky. Naruto morphed into his MSS3 form and used a Kaioken times 2 to gain 400 billion power before appearing behind Cooler. Cooler was about to gather more power when Vegeta landed a hard kick in the center of the Frost Demon's back. Cooler's body soared up into the sky before coming to a halt. When Cooler had had enough of fooling around, he unleashed all of his strength in his fourth form, exposing him to have a power level of 400 billion. Trunks and the others were stunned as Goku and Naruto continued to push Cooler higher into space. Cooler deflected Goku's punch with a crossguard as Goku performed a Kiao Ken times 2 to send him flying back. Before Cooler could respond, Naruto materialized in front of him and hit him even harder. The two Saiyans alternated between assaults and combos until Cooler was outside Earth's atmosphere. Goku then attempted his first feint of the bout, he shifted his assault at the last second, pretending to still be aiming for Cooler's head, and punched the Frost Demon in the gut. Naruto then used this opportunity to charge up a fully charged Gallic Kamehameha. Goku maintained the pressure on as the indigo-colored blast stretched across the sky till Cooler exclaimed, Are you crazy? He'll kill us both. Goku smiled and teleported out of the way at the last second. Naruto's full-powered Gallic Kamehameha smashed into Cooler, causing a gigantic explosion visible from Earth. However, before the blast subsided, Cooler transitioned into his fifth form, increasing his power level by tenfold, giving the Frost Demon a power level of four trillion. As his key flowed over everyone and everything in the surrounding space, it rocked and rattled the entire world, causing earthquakes and tsunamis to form across the seas. Cooler appeared from the light of Vegeta's assault and slammed his fist at Goku, knocking him back into Naruto. Everyone on Earth shuddered as Cooler's tremendous power level blasted through their cosmos. Several Saiyans on planet Salada sensed the combat and sent their senses out to observe. 
Naruto scowled, thinking the strength was comparable to that of the Frost Demons. He gathered as many Super Saiyans as he could and stood firm in the event that the Frost Demon arrived on their planet. If Cooler did appear, he would be met by a barrage of Super Saiyan Ki blasts that would number in the hundreds. Naruto and Goku were grinning from ear to ear. Kakarot, I call dibs, Naruto exclaimed as his Saiyan blood began to boil. No way, Naruto, you had to fight last time, Goku exclaimed. Are you challenging your king? Naruto mumbled. You know you're not my king. I live on earth, said Goku, sticking out his tongue. Naruto extended his hand. Play you for it, you're not going to win this one, Goku exclaimed. What the hell is going on here? Cooler exclaimed in disbelief. As they began to play rock, paper, scissors, he thought to himself. He didn't have to wait long before Goku raised his fists in triumph and exclaimed, Ha ha ha, I triumph, Naruto. Fine, don't get sloppy, Naruto said as he crossed his arms and powered down. I got this, Kaioken times 20, Goku said. His power level increased to 4 trillion, and everyone trembled as they saw Goku's strength completely match Cooler's. What awesome power. Trunks realized he had been so focused on the fight that he had almost missed Salsa trying to hide in the distance. Before Trunks appeared above him and ran his sword through his chest, Salsa picked out a small green seedling and dropped it into a fissure, saying, Sorry, but I can't have you causing any more trouble here. He returned his gaze to the sky and concentrated on Goku's fight, oblivious that the seed growing a few feet away was steadily sprouting tendrils. Mom was right about him. He really is the strongest, Trunks muttered as he watched Goku battle the Frost Demon. Goku and Cooler exchanged punches before leaping back and looking each other down. Let's have a good fight, Goku exclaimed, grinning. Are you the one who killed my brother? Cooler said, frowning. No, but if you want revenge, you'll have to get past me first, said Goku, shaking his head. Revenge? I'd like to thank whoever murdered my brother. However, losing all of my soldiers was a little disheartening. I know Frieza despised you, Saiyans, but I have a different opinion of you. Join me, become my new troops, and with your might, you might be able to help me conquer the universe. Are we going to fight now? Goku asked, shaking his head. Because if you aren't, I'm just going to go ahead and attack right now. Goku launched out at Cooler with immense speed and was in front of him before he could react. Goku raised his fist and lashed out with all his power. A huge boom was heard as Goku threw Cooler backward. Goku shot over and kicked out at Cooler's hip before he recognized it. Damn it, where is this strength coming from? Cooler was sent flying once more. Goku went on the attack. He continued to assault with thousands of punches and kicks, his martial abilities developed his entire life demonstrating his ability to overcome all of Cooler's attacks and counter with pinpoint accuracy. Cooler was aware that he was being hurt. Cooler used a ki eye to clear some distance before slamming his fist into Goku's throat. Goku, on the other hand, was able to anticipate Cooler's moves and planted the bottom of his foot against his knuckles, springing back with the force of the strike while charging up a beam attack. Super Kamehameha. Goku yelled as a massive ki beam engulfed Cooler and shot him down to the ground. You damn dirty, Saiyan apes, yelled Cooler as he raised his arms and pushed back against the beam. How dare you rebel against the new emperor of the universe? During the fight, his strength level increased, and he gradually caught up to Goku. They fought for a few minutes before Cooler was able to knock the beam away. Goku was ready to charge at him when he was stopped by a gigantic tree growing in the distance. Everyone on Earth has almost no energy left in them. The roots grew out and covered a huge area of the surface, destroying cities and draining entire towns of their vitality. The Z fighters closest to the tree saw the greatest depletion of energy. The roots curled around them, causing the tree of might to expand at a breakneck pace. My energy? Trunks stated as the roots tightened around his body. The remaining Z fighters were all in the same spot. They were so focused on the fight that the moment the roots grabbed them, it was all over. Cooler smiled as he flew towards the Tree of Might. Goku scowled in response to his sudden departure and was prepared to go rescue everyone. I got this. Just go after him, Vegeta exclaimed from the distance, and make sure he doesn't eat any of those fruits. Naruto performed his zoom spell to transfer all of the Z fighters to planet Salada, and Goku nodded. He didn't have time to worry about the rest of the world. They were most likely already dead, wiped out by the tree. I'll use my planet's Dragon Balls to resurrect them but for the time being, I'll have to take those away from Cooler. Naruto then appeared at the base of the tree using his rapid transmission. 
Goku had used the same method to seal off Cooler. Cooler, who was rapidly gaining strength, blasted a death ball at Goku and fled to the side. Kaioken times 21. Goku yelled as he pushed back the blast and attempted to disable Cooler. Goku's body was on the edge of collapsing, but he hung on and managed to cut Cooler off again. You're a jerk. Get out of my way. Cooler South plunged both of his fists into Goku's stomach, and Superman punched him all the way back to Earth. Goku coughed up a mouthful of blood as he felt his body dig into the dirt. Every bone in his body was cracking as the stone in front of him fractured and shattered into dust. Cooler then leapt out of the hole and dashed over to the foot of the tree. He came just in time to watch Naruto stuff all the fruits into his pocket. You! exclaimed Cooler. Return those, his complexion grew golden as his body was suffused with demonic chi. You dare to force me to fill out this form? I'll make you pay! The might of Cooler rushed into the sky. Naruto's eyes widened as he exclaimed, how the HFIL? Now that all of the fruits had been picked, the huge tree began to whiten. Before plummeting to the earth, the once mighty tree began to revert to seed form. Cooler reached out before Naruto could see him. When Cooler took the seed, Naruto just pulled it into his pocket space. Cooler's eyes opened, and he exclaimed, What did you do? Give it back. Naruto swiftly transformed into a Super Saiyan 3 and was about to use his Kaioken when Cooler punched him to the ground. Around this time, Goku manages to escape the Goku-shaped tunnel and eat a Senzu bean. In a moment, his base power level increased from 200 million to 300 million, he jumped back up, realizing Naruto's predicament was far worse than his. Naruto was hit when his power was merely 200 billion. Before he lost consciousness, his entire body was paralyzed. Naruto was only seconds away from death at the time. Goku noted that he could no longer feel Cooler's energy when he looked over at the Golden Frost Demon. Seeing this as a potentially dangerous situation, he used his immediate transmission to pick up Naruto and travel to planet Salada. Cooler, witnessing them come and go, made him completely lose his temper. Where did you go, you little shits? Cooler exclaimed. I'll destroy the entire planet. If you think I'll let you eat my fruit, you're mistaken. If I can't have the Tree of Might, no one else will. Cooler raised his hands and made a giant supernova ball above his head, then lowered his hand, triggering a massive explosion. Earth was only there for a few seconds before the core burst and blew out into space dust. And with that, Earth, home to billions, was obliterated. When Goku reappeared on planet Salada, Naruto was drenched in pools of his own blood and was about to die. Goku hurriedly placed a senzu bean in his mouth and forced it down with his key. He then observed Naruto opening his eyes and yelling, Cooler. Naruto's strength level has risen to 300 million, matching Goku's, Naruto began to build up like mad as he attempted to detect what had happened to Earth. Like a bolt of lightning passing through his chest, Naruto realized that it was gone. Naruto let off a key explosion while his entire body was engulfed in a golden flame. Ill fucking kill him, says the narrator. Naruto's wrath had unintentionally transformed him into a new Super Saiyan stage. His body shrank back to its original size, and his hair lost its Super Saiyan spikes. The golden flames, on the other hand, just became hotter. Naruto. As the flames burnt the grass around them, Goku yelled in concern. Goku was gritting his teeth and clutching his fist to the point of blood as he was pushed back by the tremendous key explosion. Dad. Goku's ears twitched before he turned to see his family hurrying over with worried expressions on their faces. Naruto wailed as the flames cleansed his body. Everything useless within him seemed to be carried away by the fire emanating from his core. When he opened his eyes, golden flames flashed across his irises, followed by the black pupil in the middle. His body then adapted and he felt light for the first time. The flames dwindled till merely wisps flowed from his flesh now and again. What? Naruto sensed his great power as he glanced at the new form. Naruto's hair was in a state of disarray but slowly waving with his burning gold aura, his tail bristled with energy as it waved back and forth, and his frame was almost devoid of fat, only pure muscle. Naruto's strength level was an incredible 1.5 trillion even without his Kaioken. Even if he increased his power by 20, 30, or more, Vegeta was unsure he could defeat Golden Cooler. He was dealing with an entirely different sphere of power. Naruto considered his choices. He knew he had enough Super Saiyans to complete the ritual, but he couldn't decide whether or not to utilize them. Naruto could turn Super Saiyan God without the ceremony in the original canon, but contemporary Naruto's pride prohibited him from doing so. It all comes down to this. 
I can't let Cooler go. I'd rather fuse with that fool than use, that, ritual, Vegeta stated with a sigh. Naruto. What exactly is that? Goku was perplexed when he beheld the new form. This is the official Super Saiyan 4 level. Hmm. Dot odd, I can feel myself getting stronger. It's as if the multiplier keeps increasing the longer I stay in this form, Vegeta observed. Wow. That's incredible. Not to mention your energy, which feels calm, even tranquil, Goku murmured as he inspected the shape. Yeah. It feels like there. Wait. I don't feel any strain. This form does not deplete stamina. Vegeta was taken aback. Super Saiyan 4 is absolutely amazing, Goku exclaimed in amazement. But. I believe this is the end of Super Saiyan's evolution, the final transformation is 4. Naruto declared as he peered up at the stated location of Earth. Naruto had unknowingly gazed up at the full moon, ah, crap. Everyone noticed Naruto's power begin to swing wildly. Everyone took a step back as they noticed Vegeta's body growing in size. They'd all seen the Uzaru transformation before, but his fur was golden this time. His power level was 10 times that of his most powerful Super Saiyan transformation, the true Super Saiyan 4, giving him a power level of 15 trillion. Naruto yelled at the sky as he swiftly gathered himself. His blood was on fire, and his Saiyan instincts were blasting through every cell in his body. Naruto felt all of his blood suddenly flow in reverse as he slowly recovered consciousness over his own body. His body began to decrease in size, and his hair turned black, long, and wild. His fur turned a dark blood scarlet and covered much of his chest and legs. This was the most powerful surge Naruto had ever felt in his life. It was 40 times stronger than a Super Saiyan 4, providing Naruto with a 200,000 times base modifier. I'll call this. Primordial Super Saiyan, Naruto said as he opened his eyes, showing the same fiery golden eyes of a Super Saiyan 4. Naruto's most recent modifications were. 75x base MSS1. 200x base MSS2 1000x base MSS3 SS4 to 5000 times the base. 50,000x base, Golden Uzaru 200,000x base equals Primordial Super Saiyan. Mastering their prior Super Saiyan forms enabled a far larger multiplier than Naruto had anticipated. Vegeta would have thought a Saivan was conceivable. If a Saiyan had skipped learning his next forms, it would have looked like this. 50x base SS1 100x base SS2 3 to 400 x SS3 to 400 SS4 to 2000 times the base. 20,000 x base equals Golden Uzaru 16,000 x base equals Primordial Super Saiyan. And as an abbreviation for Primal Super Saiyan. Also, because SS4's multiplier is constantly increasing, individuals who skimped on mastery may soon catch up. Golden Uzaru appears to double the strongest Super Saiyan modifier by 10 rather than merely the SS1's form, which would have given them a 500 times increase. Naruto's new primal Super Saiyan strength level was 60 trillion. Goku swallowed as he watched the procedure and gazed up at the moon. Much like Naruto, Goku felt the same way when he became a primordial Super Saiyan. However, Goku's transformation was clearly weaker. His primordial Super Saiyan modifier was merely 40,000 times his base, giving Goku a power level of 12 trillion. This form, on the other hand, was simple to control. Goku could even utilize the Kaioken to effortlessly catch up. Goku increased his base to 60 million with a Kaioken times 5. The two stood next to each other, their clothes still intact, but their hair had grown and changed from gold to their customary black. Their only difference was their hairstyles and Naruto's bright flames in his eyes. Naruto turned around to face his family and friends. He then glanced at Goku and pondered, Perhaps mastery of Super Saiyan 3 and the tail are the only requirements to access this form. If I remember correctly, Baby Vegeta had also become a permanent Super Saiyan 3. We'll be right there. Please have someone use the Dragon Balls to repair Cooler's injuries. Naruto plucked two fruits from the Tree of Might and tossed one to Goku. Eat it, Naruto stated this as he bit into the fruit and chewed it. Naruto's base power level increased by 15 times until it reached 4.5 billion installed. As he felt his energy increase, Goku swiftly finished the fruit and exclaimed, this is good stuff. This gave Naruto a power level of 900 trillion and Goku a power level of 180 trillion in primal Super Saiyan form. All Goku needed to do was keep a Kaioken times 5 and he'd be equal with Naruto. The two teleported together with a massive sphere of air and reappeared where Earth had been. Cooler's devastation was seen to them, 
his golden radiance continues to illuminate the darkness of space like a beacon in the dead of night. Naruto and Goku were both enraged as they headed at Cooler at breakneck speed. Cooler didn't have time to respond as their united attack destroyed his facie. Naruto struck him on the left side, while Goku struck him on the right. Cooler was booted in the gut with a spear kick that stretched out his gut, forcing him to fly away like a broken ragdoll before he could yell in pain. Naruto appeared behind him, grabbed his hands together, and swung his fists over his head, slamming Cooler in the face and dropping him below the Saiyan's vision. Goku teleported beneath him and grabbed his tail, twisting him around with a fast tug, slamming the Frost Demon's face square into Naruto's spinning knee kick. Cooler felt his head swirl as Goku began pummeling him with fists while yelling, you killed them all. Naruto emerged behind Cooler and began punching him in the back, aiming for his spine and lower back. The entire planet? What for? Goku yelled once again as he struck a powerful kick to Cooler's stomach. Some shitty tree? Goku cursed as he followed up with a backflip kick to Cooler's chin. Cooler roared, spreading his arms and knees to create a shockwave about him. Cooler yelled, enough, as a bright red and purple key barrier forced Goku and Naruto back. Naruto and Goku stood side by side and powered up, multiplying their power levels by 20 and shouting. Kaioken times 20, Kaioken times 20, Super, Gallic Kamehameha, the two Saiyans yelled together. Their blows merged and charged at Golden Cooler with the aim to kill, even Goku could not forgive him. Nova Crusher, yelled Cooler, holding out his hand. A large golden explosion flew from his hand, colliding with their united strike. Goku clinched his teeth and yelled, Kaioken times 40, while the two wrestled back and forth for what felt like hours. Naruto grinned and exclaimed, Kaioken times 40. Their blast became even more powerful as it began to repel Cooler's strike, useless. Cooler yelled as he poured even more power into the attack. Goku was amazed that his primordial Super Saiyan body could withstand Kaioken's stress so well. Kaioken times 100, he said with renewed enthusiasm. Kaioken times 100, said Naruto before following Goku's lead. Cooler's beam swiftly withdrew all the way to the base of his hand as their blast shifted the balance back in their favor. Damned you! Cooler yelled as he erupted in wrath. Back on Salada, they summoned the dragon dubbed Ryajin, Dragon plus Jin. The gigantic monkey dragon glanced over Salada and peered down at Dend and the rest of the Z warriors before announcing, I am the eternal dragon Ryajin. What do you want? Alright, guys, he can only grant two wishes, but his power is even greater than Purunga's, so choose your wishes wisely, Dend remarked, staring at Gohan before noticing him nod. I wish for all the damage inflicted by members of the planetary trade organization's leaders and their men to be undone, Gohan stated, raising his palms to the dragon. This includes planets, bodies, and everything else they annihilated. It shall be done, answered the dragon, nodding his head. His eyes blazed bright crimson, and all across the Milky Way, innumerable planets and mortal beings that had been wrecked and slain by PTO were resurrected, including Earth. The next wish, Gohan continued, looking up, is to resurrect all those who died as a result of the planetary trade organization's actions. It is done, the dragon murmured, his eyes sparkled. Before shooting across the surface of planet Salada, Ryajin transformed into a beam of light. Innumerable stolen lives and worlds appeared, and like a frantic frenzy, innumerable conflicts erupted in order for those victims to retake their planets. Those who had their entire world devastated by the PTO awoke thinking it had all been a horrific nightmare. Cooler has finally been hit by Goku and Naruto's blast. This is completely pointless, Cooler yelled as he charged up as much as he could. Goku and Naruto could feel his power soaring to unprecedented heights, but just as swiftly as it rose, it plummeted and his golden form vanished. Cooler swiftly reverted to his fifth form, removing the golden gloss from his skin. As he fought to withstand Goku and Naruto's combined strike, the Frost Demon's hands began to disintegrate. When Cooler's defenses began to crumble, the upper half of his body began to rip into shreds. No way. This is impossible. Cooler yelled as his bottom half parted from his body and his upper half flew into space. While Cooler's top shot off into space, everything below sank into Earth's gravity and burned up when it entered the atmosphere. Unbeknownst to the two primal Super Saiyans, a small and virtually imperceptible vortex rose up and drew Cooler into at the very last second, before his head was smashed. When Cooler's key vanished, Goku and Naruto were certain of their win. They abruptly stopped their onslaught and powered down. They exhaled a sigh of relief, 
glanced at each other, and nodded before returning to planet Salada. Goku and Naruto came in front of their family, exhausted. Before being mobbed by shouts, the two smiled and gave them a thumbs up. Bulma and Chi Chi leapt into their husband's arms as they were surrounded by their loved ones. Naruto laughed as he looked over to see a perplexed future Trunks, when did mom get a tail? Why are there so many Saiyans, and why was I born so early? What exactly am I? What am I doing? Can you teach me how to do that monkey transformation, dad? With stars in his eyes, Gohan inquired. Me, too, dad, says the child. Goten stated that he was climbing on the back of Goku's shoulders. Don't leave me out of it, Trunks muttered, clutching Naruto's arm. Naruto motioned with his hand to future Trunks. When Naruto and Bulma approached him, everyone stepped back. Hey, doesn't he look like me? Kid Trunks scratched his head. That's because I am you, sorta, future Trunks remarked with a smile. Everyone but Bulma and Naruto were stunned. Bulma pressed her hand on Trunks' cheek and asked, A mother always recognizes her child, but how is this possible? Future Trunks smiled and started telling his story. Everyone shivered as they learned that they had been slaughtered by the androids, and Goku pointed to himself, saying, Even I died. No, you died from a new disease, Future Trunks stated, shaking his head. Your demise was caused by a heart virus. The medicine to heal the disease had not yet been invented, but a remedy was discovered several years later. Future Trunks gave out a vial of medicine, saying, I'm not sure if you'll need this, but better safe than sorry. Goku snatched the vial and asked, is it grape flavored? The heart virus that would have tortured Goku evaporated when Naruto shook his head and cast a cleansing spell on him. I suppose there was some truth to the ultra divine water being the source of Goku's illness, or maybe he got it as a child when he traveled the world, Vegeta thought as he grabbed the vial from Goku and handed it to Bulma. If Goku was sick, he is no more, we can give this to a medical facility or lab in the event of an outbreak of this disease. Future Trunks shook his head, surprised to learn that his father could utilize magic, and considered asking for their assistance in battling the androids. When Naruto saw the expression in his future son's eyes, he shook his head and stated, we can help you, dot but I think it would be better if I trained you for a couple of years. You should be the one to deal with your problems. Future Trunks grinned as he accepted his father's offer to train him, I would love to train with you, dad, he said, shaking his head. But now I'm certain that mom didn't just make a time machine, but something that permits me to travel through the multiverse. That indicates my time is linear. Dot and whatever time passes here will also pass in future Trunks reality, Bulma completed future Trunks sentence. I am a genius. Trunks laughed, and Naruto remarked, a day would be enough. Grabbing Trunks' shoulder, he transferred him to the timeless training grounds of the Saiyans. When Goku yelled, wait for me, and followed them, everyone else decided to take a break, knowing what he was thinking. Trunks looked amazed as his eyes darted over the training grounds. Naruto described how the training grounds functioned, and he even told Trunks about the time chamber that was on there in his watch. Trunks had been taken aback, to say the least. If only Gohan knew about that place, he thought as he clutched his hand. Naruto rubbed his shoulder and said, when you return, I will accompany you to King Kai's planet. Namek, the planet in your universe, can be found from there. You can utilize Purunga to bring everyone back to life. Even Goku from your timeline, who supposedly died of natural reasons. The Namekian dragon is far powerful than the one on Earth, and it has no restrictions on resurrecting the dead. When Goku arrived, Trunks smiled and exclaimed, I want to train too. After all, I have a new form to learn and need to reach Super Saiyan 4. Naruto nodded as he saw everyone else enter the training grounds. I hope you're ready, training with this won't be easy. Naruto said to Future Trunks. Future Trunks smirked and took a combat stance before declaring, I don't give up. That's my son, said Naruto, smiling, the first thing we need to do is make your tail longer. Trunks stared at his father, puzzled, and said. Naruto was startled to discover that casting a complete heal on Future Trunks helped him regrow his tail. If it didn't work, he'd have to employ the Dragon Balls or the Trick Turls used in the movie to regrow it. Trunks' life experiences may truly be described as hell from this point on. When he wasn't being beaten up, he was either being forced to undergo constant gravity training or learning to control his Uzaru form, leaving him with little time to socialize with the other Z fighters. Everyone, with the exception of Goku, Naruto, and Trunks, made an effort to spend time together and treat this event as a family vacation while within the training grounds. 
Trunks got to know his family in the brief time he was given and grew much stronger throughout his time here. The 2.5 years they spent inside the timeless training grounds allowed him to test his boundaries well beyond those of his canon self. Trunks also had a lot of fights with Gohan. Gohan has achieved Super Saiyan 3 throughout their training together. Trunks was knocked over and tumbling across the ground by the explosion of power caused by Gohan's transformation. The adolescent from the future then looked over to see Trunks and Goten, who were two and a half years old at the time, transform into Super Saiyans and startle everyone in the vicinity even more. What? I can do it as well! Ranch exclaimed as she changed into a Super Saiyan. This isn't my timeline at all, Trunks said, shaking his head in bewilderment. Is there a Super Saiyan discount sale going on? However, this training room is simply inexpensive. I actually got such a huge power up in such a short period of time that I've already reached Super Saiyan 2, now I just have to perfect it. Naruto grinned, thinking that it was only natural that Trunks and Goten were born as geniuses with boundless potential due to the level of S cells in their bodies. Around the same time, Goku turned into a Super Saiyan 4, revealing to Trunks what he was in for. Naruto laughed as he thanked them for their efforts, he returned his attention to future Trunks and continued their training. It didn't take future Trunks long to master the mastered Super Saiyan 2 form. Vegeta presented future Trunks with a fruit from the Tree of Might after obtaining this condition. He only had around 30 pieces of the fruit left, so he decided to distribute them to all of the Z fighters. Naruto didn't want to eat another one, and the only reason he did so in the first instance was to ensure he could kill Cooler. When he distributed them to his family and friends, their new power levels became 4.6 billion Naruto, 4.6 billion for Goku, 3.1 billion in Bulma, 3.2 billion Chichi, Trunks of the Future, 3.8 billion, Trunks for Children, 280 million, 280 million for Kid Goten, 3.5 billion for Kid Gohan, 1.5 billion Krillin, 1.4 billion Tien, Chaitsov, 1.1 billion Piccolo, 3.9 billion Gardnia, 2.9 billion, 4.0 billion Bardock, 3.8 billion Giant Raditz, 4.2 billion. Napa Valley. 3.1 billion Trunks was about to leave when he was stopped by the alternate timeline version of his father. I want to test something out, Vegeta stated, gathering everyone around him. I want everyone to transform into Super Saiyans and pour your hearts and feelings into Trunks, Naruto said as he gathered Goku, Gohan, Chi-Chi, and Bulma around Trunks. Trust me, don't fill him with ki, but with your emotions, everyone said, puzzled. Everyone closed their eyes and followed Naruto's instructions. Trunks felt an unfamiliar energy surge fill his body. Without even realizing it, his body ascended into the air, and thunderous key explosions emitted an almost holy light that encircled him. Trunks' hair and eyes went crimson as his body thinned down, and a burning red aura encircled his body as he drifted back down to the ground. Trunks gazed up at Naruto as he stared at his hands, feeling the god key stream out of every drop of blood in his body, and exclaimed, This power, it's. I can't sense his key. Krillin expressed amazement. His hair is no longer spiky, and it's red now, Bulma observed her kid. Congratulations, son, you have just become the first Super Saiyan god since the era of planet Sadala, Naruto stated, surprising everyone once more. God, Piccolo clutched his chin, as he led everyone out of the training grounds, Naruto laughed. Trunks smiled at his family before pulling out his time machine and teleporting them all to Earth. Bulma examined the spacecraft and discovered her handwriting, Hope. Trunks opened the hatch and stated, you wrote that the day I left. I never realized I was so sentimental, Bulma added with a smile. Naruto cut the debate short by flying up and cramming himself into the space behind the pilot's seat. Trunks came over to him and sat in front of Vegeta, waving goodbye. When the hatch closed, Trunks said sarcastically, are you comfortable back there? Just turn this infernal machine on, Naruto yelled. Trunks laughed as he taped a couple buttons and took off. As they traveled through time and space, the universe distorted around Naruto's eyes. Before Vegeta felt a tug on the ship, glowing lights peeled out and twisted into strips. When Naruto arrived in the future timeline, he observed the wreckage of Trunks' world inside, a sorrowful expression on his face. Vegeta and Trunks then flew out to meet future Bulma, but she froze when she saw him. Bulma's eyes welled up with tears as she moved closer to Naruto, is this real? She shouted, her hands trembling on his face. After realizing that she wasn't dreaming, future Bulma hid her face in Naruto's chest and began to cry. 
Naruto sighed as he embraced her and patted her on the back. Future Bulma was taken aback by his adoration and leapt up in astonishment, her face was flushed and she could still make Naruto smile. Trunks narrated what he went through, seeing his mother's reaction with mistrust, that, plus the fact that what she created wasn't just a time machine. They carried the talk inside her house and spent the next few hours catching up, you mean we can bring everyone back, they exclaimed. Bulma began to cry once more, I'll be back in a bit, Trunks, you take out those androids, Naruto replied, nodding his head. Trunks nodded and stood up, and Vegeta transported to King Kai's land, where he was startled to see him. Naruto took up King Kai as he collapsed, looking around and saying, where's Kakarot? He's training with the Grand Kai alongside the rest of his family and friends, King Kai explained. I need you to do me a favor, Naruto replied, nodding his head. Do you want me to find Namek? I've been watching Trunks struggle for a long now, but don't let the fact that they developed a time machine slip your mind. Mortals aren't supposed to enter that realm for a reason, King Kai explained as he crossed his arms. I understand, Naruto said as he placed his hand on King Kai's back, and they arrived in New Namek after a few minutes. Naruto teleported there and was granted permission to use the Dragon Balls after explaining his condition. Naruto used the Sheet Wishlist hack because Guru didn't make any safeguard against it in this timeline. The first wish was used to restore all the damage done to the bodies and structures of Earth that the androids destroyed, resurrect Piccolo, restore Kami's youth and grant him the ability to unlock potential, grant Kami the ability to improve the wishing strength of the Dragon Balls, resurrect Goku, put a copy of the Timeless Training Grounds on Earth's lookout, and the last one was to restore Bulma's youth and give her a lifespan equal to that of a Saiyan. Purunga was then dismissed by Naruto because he couldn't come up with anything else to wish for. After returning to Earth, Naruto sensed Trunks handily dispatching the androids. Smiling, Naruto teleported over to Bulma and startled her while she was still marveling at the repair of her planet and the return of her youth. Hey, Bulma, have you still got the dragon radar? Vegeta's question startled her. Bulma immediately recognized what he was saying and spun around before leaping into his arms, thank you, Naruto. Naruto smiled and drew her back. Trunks entered the room and exclaimed, Mom, it's done, the androids are gone. Have you seen the planet? Everything that was destroyed has returned, and there are a slew of dead bodies all everywhere. The dragon radar? Replied Vegeta, smiling. Trunks' jaw fell as he noticed Bulma was youthful again, I just used the Namekian Dragon Balls to revive Piccolo and Goku, I'm gathering the Dragon Balls now to wish everyone else back. Trunks used his senses to detect the presence of Goku and Piccolo. In actuality, Goku had teleported over to witness what was going on, exclaiming, Naruto, how did you get so strong? With a puzzled expression, Goku remarked, I've gotten the radar, Bulma murmured as she returned to the room, holding the dragon radar. She looked at Goku and laughed as she hugged him, Hello, Bulma, you've not aged a day, Goku exclaimed in amazement. I'm Vegeta from another reality, one where you didn't die, Vegeta stated, taking the dragon radar from Bulma. Goku scratched his brow, unable to keep up. I'm from the past, Vegeta groaned, another past than yours. Goku gave him a short glance and said, but, you're so strong, how could you possibly be from the past? Holy crap, Trunks, your strength is ridiculous, Goku exclaimed to Trunks, you certainly grew up large. Never mind that. Grinned Vegeta. Go to Kami's tower and request that he strengthen the eternal dragon's power so that it can bring people back from the dead who have previously been wished for, preferably without a time limit. Wow, Vegeta, you really changed, Goku said, realizing what Naruto was up to. While Naruto gathered the dragon balls, Goku used his quick transmission to do as he was commanded. Everyone gathered at Kami's lookout point to call the new and improved Shenron. The Earth of Future Trunks had totally returned to normal after using the desire to resurrect everyone who had been slaughtered by the androids. It's almost as if the androids never existed. The Z warriors had all returned to Earth and met up. Trunks and his family rushed Gohan, while Future Vegeta could be heard grunting. Naruto approached him and gave him some advice, saying, Don't resist your love for Bulma. You'd better watch out for that woman, she's the love of our lives. Future Vegeta scoffed at the younger version of himself, his face flushed with embarrassment. Don't give up on him, he really loves you, though you have to drag that out of him, Naruto said future Bulma, with all due respect, Saiyan pride. After collecting compliments from everyone, Naruto decided it was time to head home, he offered everyone the rest of his fruits of might before having Kami unleash everyone's potential before eating them. 
Vegeta left them with Trunks to return to his timeline for what he thought would be the last time. As he returned to his own timeline, Naruto could only worry if they would be able to overcome the Zamasu problem. I hope you stay strong enough and never stop seeking strength to protect your world, Naruto remarked after returning to his time. Don't let me down now, I trust you can defend this timeline. Trunks fought back tears as he said, thank you, dad. As Naruto exited the time machine, he gave Trunks one last piece of advice, your Vegeta is a lot like I used to be. He's a little rough around the edges, but he'll work hard in the future to better himself, so cut me some slack now and then. Trunks laughed before nodding and closing the time machine's hatch. He then started the engine, giving his father one more salute before disappearing through the time and space vortex. Naruto smirked as he imagined how powerful the Cell and androids would be in this timeline. In eagerness, his blood began to boil. Naruto wasn't going to do anything to prevent their coming, in fact, he was looking forward to the challenge. Flying out to inform his family of his return, Naruto considered how much training he could get in before his new adversaries arrived. Naruto and Goku were floating in the lotus position at the timeless training grounds, maintaining their Super Saiyan 4 forms. They had spent nearly 15 years attempting to improve the potency of their multiplier before making any progress in understanding all facets of the Golden Transformation Branch's final form. They only grew stronger the longer they remained in that form, and the multiplier increased faster when the Saiyan was fighting. As their powers grew beyond common sense, they demolished every growing crop of Senzu beans multiple times. They even improved the primordial Super Saiyan form. By mastering it, their eyes turned a solid dark gold color, as if the SS4 flames had been entirely tamed. Their hair lost its wild appeal and reverted to a base form style, and instead of a 40 times boost to their greatest Super Saiyan modifier, it was increased to a 50 times boost. After another 15 years in the training grounds, Naruto and Goku's multiplier had increased by a factor of 2000. In Primal Super Saiyan, their combined multiplier was an incredible 350,000. They opened their eyes, revealing fiery gold irises and black pupils. The two Saiyans were ecstatic as their Super Saiyan 4 multiplier had hit 7000 times their base. Naruto landed on the ground and drew a long breath in, saying aloud, I finally understand why it's called a transformation ability. What do you mean? Goku inquired as he stretched out, feeling the true Super Saiyan Force power. Why don't our bodies explode from the sudden increase in ki when we transform? Naruto responded to his inquiry with another inquiry. It's because the Super Saiyan form is a full body transformation rather than a technique like the Kaioken, Goku pondered. Exactly, because our bodies change on a physical scale, our muscles, bones, and organs all grow stronger to withstand the increased pressure, Naruto observed. As he transformed into a primal Super Saiyan, Naruto flexed his aura and yelled into the heavens, calm, peaceful energy that continuously grows, Super Saiyan 4 truly is the pinnacle for our golden forms. On the other hand, one could claim that the primordial body we get in primal Super Saiyan is god level. Trunks' Super Saiyan god form couldn't provide him an advantage in the future if we spared him. That must mean the red Super Saiyan God form reflects our key reaching God level, Goku said, tilting his head. I'm wondering if we can combine the two? Goku made a contemplating gesture by tilting his head and placing his hand on his chin. Ha! Huh. How should we refer to it? Naruto considered the name. How about Super Saiyan 5? Says one. Nah. Primal Super Saiyan God, Goku replied simply. Nah. How about true Super Saiyan God? one who is both god in physique and ki, Vegeta said. Mine sounds better, said Goku, shaking his head. I beg to differ, joked Naruto. I came up with the name first, so I get to choose, the two began to argue, Goku yelled. We'll fight to the death to decide, Naruto grumbled, and the two launched into a devastating combat. Every punch and kick had the potential to shatter entire solar systems, but the training grounds had grown with them and could withstand the shockwaves. Naruto and Goku sparred for hours. They fought for days, with neither side gaining an advantage. After three days of combat, the two Saiyans were on fumes as they pounded each other in the face. As they both tumbled backward, a tremendous booming roar echoed throughout the neighborhood. It appeared to be another tie when Naruto suddenly used his full heal spell, appearing over Goku and punching him in the face, causing a large explosion. Goku passed out in a moment, as Naruto crossed his arms and healed him. When Goku awoke, he grimaced and exclaimed, Cheater! This was a fight, not a spar or training, Naruto laughed, You failed, Kakarot! 
Goku groaned and said, true Super Saiyan God it is. Naruto extended his hand and pulled him up. How do we get to it now? Naruto had some thoughts, but he decided he needed Whis's counsel on how to continue. He's been striving to refine his key lately, condensing it into his core over and over. However, Naruto had no idea if this was working because he hadn't seen any results yet. Another issue he had was that his Kaioken had difficulty maintaining higher levels beyond 75. When he pushed the spell structure to a hundred times its base output, it became unstable and continually on the point of collapsing. The new specifications were that it had a maximum bonus limit of 100 times and depleted 1% of his MP every 30 seconds. There was no going back to the previous spell module after he made the alterations. Naruto laughed and took a long breath, screamed as loudly as he could, pushing his power level to the limit and flushing out all his ki. He absolutely had nothing left, but he persisted in trying to go beyond. Without ki, he was left with raw emotions, desperately trying to find another source of energy. Naruto felt his body weaken before collapsing asleep. Goku gave him a senzu bean and exclaimed, What happened? Were you insane or something? Seriously, what was the point of that? I just think I figured something out, Naruto beamed. Empty our ki and connect to God's ki. It should be doable, but we must first learn to detect it. Perhaps we can ask the Kaio shins. The Kaio what? Said Goku, scratching his brow. They may not even be necessary, Naruto laughed. This rudimentary method of draining our ki may work just as well. When Naruto remembered how Vegeta practiced in the canon, all he could recall was Vegeta exuding a lot of ki carelessly. It was almost as though he was attempting to deplete his supplies. There should be a window for us to sense god ki once we are out of mortal ki. We just have to keep trying, Naruto added. Goku considered what he stated and agreed with his training style. However, the two missed their families and decided to take a break from training. After returning to Earth, they wanted to spend some time with their families. Naruto and Bulma had been spending a lot of alone time together after returning from the future timeline, or as Bulma phrased it, we have some new houses to break in. Bulla was born a year later. Naruto asked him to name her, but Bulma gave him a pinch and said, I'll give you the next one. Fine, Naruto grumbled, you win again. Strongest mama on the planet. Bulma made the victory sign with her fingers. Turles reappeared a year later with Vegeta's sibling. Tarbell and his wife, the tech-tech alien known as Gur, stepped off a Capsule Corporation flagship. She was, however, a gray-skinned Saiyan with white hair. This answered Naruto's question about whether or not Bulma's genes were responsible for the Saiyan's blue hair. However, it was more correct to state that his wish resulted in the creation of Saiyan variants. Even though she was a Saiyan now, she was still a tech-tech alien at heart. She appeared primarily human, around the same height as Naruto's younger sibling and beautifully proportioned. Naruto spent time reacquainting himself with his family and allowing them to practice at the timeless training grounds. He spent years there keeping up with his brother and sister-in-law, as well as introducing his son, who had pale grayish-pink skin, black hair, and silver eyes. Gaba was his name, and he was a powerful man. Bulma and Gur became good friends. They discussed various technological topics, picking one other's brains and continuously being surprised by their brilliance. After working with Tarbell and his family, he raised their power levels to a safe 150 million before unlocking their potential, raising their power levels to about 1.1 to 1.5 billion. Naruto made certain that they had all mastered SSI before informing them of further levels and how to obtain them. They spent about 2.5 years total within the timeless training grounds. When Naruto and Tarbell arrived, they were greeted by their parents, Gardna and Naruto welcomed their son and new family members with open arms. Tarbell was astonished by his parents' adoration, but after hearing how Naruto restored them, he believed it made logical for them to go through such a transformation. While they were discussing Tarbell's exploits, the younger brother revealed that he had yet to hold a wedding ceremony for Gur. Bulma urged that they hold a wedding after hearing this. Gur gave Tarbell a puppy dog look after hearing about a human marriage ceremony, and he caved faster than a wetbag. It was a beautiful occasion. They gathered on Earth and introduced them to the rest of the Z fighters in a grand ceremony conducted in an open field. Goku wanted to fight him, but the women in the group told him to stuff it because it wasn't the right moment. The wedding's after party was very enjoyable. They ate, danced, and socialized with fellow Saiyans and humans. Naruto observed Hercule and Videl walking in the distance while they ate. They had previously joined the Kame Dojo after Bulma conducted a contest between the weakest of the Z fighters, 
When the rest of the world saw how powerful some Saiyans and humans were, they hurried to join. When Naruto sensed the father and daughter couple's strength levels, he almost vomited out his wine. Well, it appears that something good came from my interference, Naruto thought as he stared at Videl, who was attempting to capture Gohan's attention. Videl has a power level of 280,000 despite being only 8 years old, the same age as Gohan. Videl was a true prodigy, she'd be even stronger if she pushed her body more. However, it was harmful to her health and detrimental to the development of children, that is why it is advised that kids wait until their bodies grow before engaging in excessive gravity training. Hercule appeared to be much weaker than his daughter, as his power level was only 28,000, but, at the very least, it was more powerful than his canon self. He's probably slacking off in his training, Naruto reasoned as he noticed Videl taking something from behind her back. Videl held out a black clothed box, stuttering with a crimson face as she tried to speak, L. M. M. Made this for you. Gohan grinned and unwrapped the present, which was a custom-crafted lunchbox. Pulling the top off, he found a small feast of meat, eggs, and vegetables. Videl waited for his verdict on her present with an anxious expression. This is amazing. Gohan yelled, a perfect smile on his face. Videl reddened even more before grinning and thinking, I should have put the heart on it. Gohan began to eat more quickly until Goten and Trunks emerged around them and began to run about the two, mocking them by yelling, Videl and Gohan sitting in a tree. While seeing Goten and Trunks' juvenile behavior, Naruto slapped his forehead. When Ranch pulled their ears and admonished the boys before making them confess to Videl, they burst out laughing. He grinned as he looked over at his infant, Bra. He anticipated she would be a future powerhouse who carried herself like a true martial artist because she was born with a tremendous power level of 30,000. Who is this little genius? You are the princess. Naruto laughed and played with Bra, letting her clutch his fingers and kiss her cheeks. Bulma smiled at him and kissed him on the cheek. While Goku and Raditz were competing in an eating contest, the two continued to talk. Nappa was off hitting on one of the Turtle Dojo's female students and learning how to approach women from Master Roshi. His fellow Saiyans attempted numerous times to persuade him to marry, but Nappa enjoyed the life as a bachelor. Tarbul and his wife were dancing on the floor and having a good time. Naruto Sr. and Gardnia were speaking with Bardock and Jain. They looked to become good friends after realizing that Naruto believed Goku to be his adversary. Chi Chi and the other wives finally began drinking and chatting about their husbands. Tarbul received a portable gravity chamber from Naruto and a starship from Bulma as gifts. Goku's family gave them Senzu beans, Krillin gave them a blender, Piccolo gave them new weighted attire, and the rest gave them various wedding gifts. After the party, Naruto continued to alternate between training and spending time with his family, and the final year passed by as if by magic. Almost all of the Saiyans had achieved Super Saiyan 2 by the time the androids were slated to arrive, only a few of them were still working on perfecting Super Saiyan 3, with Gohan coming the closest. Bardock achieved Super Saiyan 4 and Primal Super Saiyan before anyone else, once again dazzling Naruto. Goku and Bardock had been sparing for several days and were making significant progress toward mastering Primal Super Saiyan. Because of the presence of the Super Saiyan core among the forces of the Galactic Patrol, a long-lost piece in the Milky Way began to show signs of recovery. Naruto was tinkering with the Tree of Might seed, he was debating whether to plant it on Salada. Salada's regeneration factor gave it the highest chance of growing without killing the planet and everyone on it out of all the planets in the cosmos. He also couldn't decide whether this was a sloppy approach to increase one's power. After all, it was only a supplement at its essence. Naruto didn't want the Saiyan's training to become submissive and lazy. Naruto sighed as he chose to employ Salada's Dragon Balls to create a pocket world that would fully support the growth of the Tree of Might. Along with a few safeguards to defend the tree, he also made it so that time moved much faster, around 100 billion times faster, a single second out here was equivalent to 3,100 years inside the pocket space. The pocket world could only be accessed by the royal family, and they needed the password to do so. He planned to host a competition every seven years to award the victor a single fruit. Dend may uncover the hidden potential of the runner-up. Third place would receive a substantial financial prize. Naruto stared as a small green bead materialized in his grasp, enclosing a vast world within it that existed exclusively to support the growth of the Tree of Might. He then focused the pocket universe around Salada's largest tournament venue. Flying up to the king's spectator's box, Naruto inserted the bead into the top of the decor on the king's throne, 
then exclaimed, Open sesame! In answer, a dazzling blue doorway appeared in front of him, revealing a whole new world. Looking through all he could see was an unending sea of green plains and azure skies, many rivers raced across the world's surface, and Naruto learned that the water was actually a sort of god water. Throwing the seed within, he watched as the roots spread out into infinity. Because of the time gap between the realms, Naruto felt as though everything was happening in slow motion. The time difference not only helped the tree grow quicker, but it also kept people out of it. After all, if they tried to travel through the portal, whatever portion of their body was on the other side would be 3100 years old while the one here would be the same. It wasn't at all like the time chamber. The two time flows were connected when the door of the time chamber was opened. Naruto set up the entryway such that time would always run at their own pace, acting as a weapon against those who entered because their time was still connected to the outside. Naruto took a twig from a nearby tree and pushed it through the portal, watching as the side that entered rotted into mulch in three seconds. If that were a person, whatever bodily part was passing would turn to ash in a matter of seconds. The best method to get the fruit was for him to use his zoom spell to teleport inside or to use a gadget that could survive the test of time. They could also teleport it if they had advanced technology or traveled at the speed of light. Naruto jumped up, proud of his accomplishment, and exclaimed, Harvest sesame, making the portal to close. He then returned to training and attempted to perceive God Key for the following three months. A purple-skinned guy in a cloak stood in front of the PTO's latest regeneration pod, deep in the abyss of space and time. The frost demon cooler might be found inside. The world they were in was not in conventional space but rather between the mortal and demon realms. A specific unknown entity felt right at home, completely hidden from the Kai's and God's gaze. Cooler. The world they were in was not in conventional space but rather between the mortal and demon realms. A specific unknown entity felt right at home, completely hidden from the Kai's and God's gaze. I've gotten such a fun toy. The purple man laughed and stared at Cooler as if he were a treasure. What will I do now about Cell and the androids? Maybe I could help Dr. Jero out a little. He he he. This is so much fun. Our game is going to be so much fun. In his hand, the purple-skinned man grasped a peculiar chip. Naruto would know it as the big Getty AI chip if he were around. Except the chip in his palm wasn't broken, it was in excellent operating order. To be continued. That's it for this podcast. Thank you for listening to this video. I hope you did enjoy the video. Sorry if you did. Like, share, and subscribe for more. And thank you all for helping support. And have a great day.